Hello everyone, Books with Banks back again with another book review, and this is only the first part of what I hope to be several videos covering this book and this author's work in particular coming up here. I will be doing a spoiler-free review today of Ian C. Esselmont's latest contribution to the Malazan world with his fourth Path to Ascendancy novel right here, Forge of the High Mage. This was published a few months ago outside of the U.S., however, a big reason I want to keep this video in particular spoiler-free is that it won't come out until, the book won't come out until, I believe, early 2024 over here in the States. Before I get too much further, though, if you haven't already, it would really mean a lot if you could please like and subscribe. Thank you. All right, so here's how we're going to structure this. First, I know for a lot of people out there, the two different authors and how both Esselmont and Erickson uh, have a number of different Malazan series, some prequels, some side stories, and so on. It can be a little bit daunting and even confusing whenever a new Malazan book comes out like this one. And uh, for personal context, I have read everything uh, else published in the Malazan world before going into this book. Uh, so whether explicitly or not, I am sure that my experiences with Esselmont's and Erickson's other content have definitely impacted how I feel about this most recent one. Uh, I will still stand strong in my belief, however, that Esselmont's prequel series, these Path to Ascendancy books, uh, they can be a decent entry point for audiences curious to start or to try out Malazan. Uh, sure, there are references and cameos and tie-ins throughout these four prequels that are more rewarding and exciting if you've read Esselmont's six-book long novels of the Malazan Empire series. Those are back here. It, they're kind of behind some stuff, but they're back in here. Uh, Path of Sentences right here. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, these there are elements of this prequel series that can be more rewarding if you've read his six-book main series. Uh, also, certain tie-ins and references that could have a bigger impact if you've read Erickson's Molasson Book of the Fallen. Uh, but I wouldn't say those 16 books uh, in the two authors' main series uh, are essential to enjoying these prequels in any way, shape, or form. You can still get a ton of fun out of these. Um, for these four, uh, can you jump in anywhere within this series without feeling lost? Probably not. I do think you should still read the first one, Dancer's Lament, then Deadhouse Landing, then Kellenved's Reach, all before starting the fourth and newest Forge of the High Mage, if you're just kind of sticking with the Path to Ascendancy books. Uh, Forge here actually delivers some very satisfying payoff to plot lines set up in those other three books, uh, and that honestly, uh, I wasn't even sure we'd ever see much payoff to those things. So it was a ton of fun to see that, uh, and there's already a hint of how I felt about this book overall. So that's where I fall on when to read this. If you want to start your Malazan journey with Esselmont's prequels, fine, but definitely read those prequels in order, this being fourth. Uh, all right, so again, now for a kind of a really hard part, a brief synopsis of this book, but without spoiling anything. So while the first three books of this trilogy, I'll set this down just for a second. Uh, for, while the first three books of this trilogy are very much about the early days and foundations of the Malazan Empire, this one, this fourth one, starts with the Empire already being pretty well established uh, and already splitting up its forces to go try and colonize different parts of the world. This time, our mysterious and strange emperor, uh, he has his sights set on the Falaran Archipelago, a cluster of islands off of the north coast of the Quantali continent. By and large, uh, Quantali uh, is the setting of most of the consolidated and controlled areas of the empire up to this, this point. So the Malazans have split their forces into one army going by land over the mountains through the north uh, to march to, to the northern coast of the mainland, and then another faction is going by sea. So you have this sort of two-pronged approach to get up to those islands, up to that archipelago. Um, and the goal is for them to all rendezvous up there. This is at least how vaguely the plan is kind of set up and explained to us at the beginning. Of course different things may happen. Uh, and of course, on both split paths and split storylines for the Malazans, they run into all sorts of interesting characters, factions, and little Malazan world lore tidbits and just great lore explorations. Uh, it's all very, very exciting. But 
beyond just the Malazan storyline, this kind of two-pronged uh, attack approach kind of thing, beyond that story, uh, and all others of the factions uh, that the Malazans run into, Esselmont also paints a beautiful picture of a never-really-before-seen region of this world, that aforementioned Falaran Archipelago, uh, ruled by the strict religious order and priests of Mael. Uh, it makes sense for a group of islands to pay a lot of respect uh, to the god of the seas, Mael, uh, and our protagonist in this storyline is a high priestess uh, fed up basically with her role in and the requirements of her religion, and she makes a number of escape attempts, spends much of the book trying to evade capture, looking for possible treasure. There is a bit of a treasure hunting kind of feel to some of this book. Um, and she's also trying to evade really anything worse uh, instigated by the leaders of this religion. All the while, there's a tense shifting of political power that's happening amongst these priests higher up in the most powerful positions that kind of rule over uh, the archipelago. Uh, and this terrifying power or entity, or maybe a monster even, known only as the Gistal, a Gistal. Uh, originally, I believe that was going to be the name of this novel, uh, but this Gistal looms large in the back of everyone's mind. Uh, is this something that could be disastrous for potential invaders like the Malazans? Or could this power be used for good or for ill? Uh, and what might one have to do to summon such a horrible, mighty power? So that's honestly a pretty bare bones breakdown of this story, of the kind of setup of what's going on here. Uh, and trust me, there is so much more packed in uh, this book. Dare I say, this is one of the most exciting page-turning Malazan entries in terms of action, like page to page. Um, for how short it is, about 450 pages, uh, and for how much happens in it, it's definitely one of the most one of the most fast-paced action-packed books uh, in all of Molasson. And I do love how Esselmont writes action, even though action scenes and battle scenes, um, those aren't necessarily what I first and foremost come to Molasson for. Uh, I usually hope to see a lot of explorations of things like the elder races, ancient powers, the relationships between gods and men, the idea of where a god's power comes from. Uh, those are a lot of my favorite elements of Malazan, uh, and definitely still, uh, I already mentioned the action, which I'm sure might appeal to a lot of other people, but all those things, they're my kind of religious stuff, and um, power dynamics, elder race stuff, all of that stuff is also in this book, and plays a really, really big part uh, in yeah, yeah. Uh, I would say a big theme of this book is persistence and kind of having the drive to keep going. Uh, a sort of hard work pays off uh, mentality. Uh, and after all, the book is called Forge of the High Mage. Now what that forge is exactly and who the High Mage is, uh, well, I won't say that stuff just to be safe uh, for spoilers. But needless to say, our titular High Mage uh, goes through a series of rather grueling scenarios to get a much better grip on his own magical abilities. Um, as well, uh, he also kind of, in this quote-unquote forge, uh, gets. He, I think he gets a much better, excuse me, a much better idea of what makes the Malazan Empire and the Malazan soldiers so unique and so worth fighting for. Um, beyond this storyline, you have multiple escape attempts, you have the entry and then re-entry of a nearly unassailable fortress of sorts, uh, you have a man who simply wants to fix his boat and get home, um, and just keeps hoping that that process speeds along faster. Um, one of my other favorite things about this book, and this won't surprise anyone who's seen, uh, any, any number of my other videos, uh, but it's how or it's in how Esselmont continues to explore the role of historians in portraying imperial conquests in p maybe a more positive light than any imperialism actually deserves. Uh, so while scenes with actual historians are a bit comical, uh, and while even other stuff in this book outside of just the main text, things like the maps themselves and descriptions on the maps, definitely pay attention to these, um, these things, uh, it, this all continues to play around with these ideas uh, in a sort of fun way. I would also say that with this book, Esselmont uh, then extends 
that idea, that imp critique of imperialism, to a more serious look at what it might actually mean should the Malazan succeed in getting to this Falaran archipelago. Will they be replacing a, you know, like, it might be set up, will they be replacing a bad priest of male for a good Malazan empire situation? Well, of course, it's a lot more complicated than that, uh, and it's really all dependent on who's asking these questions and whose POV we're seeing these events through. Uh, but yeah, all in all, uh, I won't say too much more for fear of spoilers, uh, but if you're a Malazan fan in any way, shape, or form, I honestly... It shouldn't really matter how many other books you still have to read before you can get to this one, uh, as long as you eventually do, uh, because this is definitely worth it. Uh, if you named for me right now five, maybe, yeah, let's say five of your favorite elements of this Malazan world, I could almost guarantee you at least three of those things whether they be places, characters, themes, races, etc., at least three of them show up in this book in a really big way. And this book is just jam-packed full of several elements I love about this world, as well as several aspects I recognize others might enjoy even more than I do, personally. Uh, all that said, um, I think that should do it now. Uh, again, trying really hard not to go into spoilers, uh, because there is some... Just absolutely exciting stuff that I can't wait to get uh, further in, in other videos on this book. But for this video, for this review today, I think I might end it here. Um, and thank you so much for watching. Uh, and I hope you'll look forward to at least one more video on my channel about Forge of the High Mage. That video should be coming out in about a week or so. And that one will feature a special guest. Uh, guest, um, you know, feel free to comment uh, down below who you think that might be. Um, that video will, uh, that one will have spoilers. Uh, but we might do a little section at the beginning of that video, spoiler free, just to, you know, ease people into it and make sure nobody accidentally clicks on it. Because again, I, I do understand that it can be kind of frustrating that this book isn't officially released in the United States. So to get like to get my hands on this, I had to find a seller that was going to ship overseas uh, in the UK. Um, thankfully, uh, they did. Uh, but yeah, so hopefully if you've enjoyed this review uh, and if you're really looking forward to getting into this book, hopefully you can find a way or navigate some kind of way to get your hands on this. Uh, if not, maybe if you have just a ton of other stuff to read this year and uh, you might just be waiting for it to come out over here uh, in the U.S. Uh, of course, you know, read at your own pace. I, I'm not going to try and make anyone read this right away or anything like that. Uh, but definitely, if you are a Malazan fan, you owe it to yourself to pick up Esselmont's newest entry into this world. Uh, also, I will say, there's some brilliant tease kind of at the very end of this, of where his fifth uh, book in the series is going to go. Uh, and so just the setup and the character that he uses to set that up, I think is it's so intriguing, and I cannot wait for that fifth book. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much again for watching. Have a great day. Bye.